Alright, so we learned how to build 63 charts in Tableau and what are their use cases, but you might be still like overwhelmed with all those options and all those charts in Tableau. And it's still not that clear how to answer the question, how do we know which chart, which visualizations that we have to pick? So that's why we're gonna go now and summarize and group all those charts under different categories. So we have the change over time, magnitude, part to whole, correlations, ranking, distribution, spatial, and flow. And each of those categories is gonna focus on a specific question, a specific problem, in order to answer it using visualizations. So now let's go through all those categories one by one in order to understand them. Alright, so now we're gonna start with the first one and the most basic category we have the change over time or sometimes we call it trends over time. So this category is gonna show us the trends or the patterns over a continuous period and it usually answers the question how does the data change over time or another one are there any trends or patterns that we can uncover from the data over time. So if you have this kind of questions then you are talking about the category change over time and the best chart in the category we have the line charts because the line charts focus only on one thing the changes over time the trends over time because mainly the line charts focus only on the changes over time the trends over time nothing else and as well visually it makes it really easy to spot trends and as we learned before we have multiple charts that covers the topic of change over time of course all the line charts usually are change over time so we have the line chart as the perfect one then we have as well the spark line charts we can use it if you want to have a compact chart for the trends analysis over the time or we can use the sloppy chart to see how the ranks is changing over time or as well we can use a bar chart so we can use the bars as well in order to analyze the changes over time and as well to go and compare different time period together and not only the bar charts we can use any type of area charts for example the stacked area chart here we have different use cases one of them is the change over time and as well to go and compare different categories together and as well we can go and use the calendar chart or the circle bubble timeline in order to visual the change over time so as you can see if you want to have only one use case inside your visualization to show the change or the trend over time then go with the line charts if you want to go and cover multiple use cases in one chart then you can go and use the area chart bar chart or the circle time charts because they don't focus on only one use case they can cover multiple use cases and one of them is the change over time Alright, so now we have the magnitude category or sometimes we call it size category and it uses the size in order to compare values. So we could use relative or absolute values in this category. So for example, if you have the following task or question, find out the highest and the lowest sales of the categories or we have to go and compare the different categories by sales in one chart. So if you have such questions or tasks, then we are talking about the category magnitude and the best chart for this question is the bar chart because it makes it very easily and clean in the visualizations in order to compare values. You can compare very easily the data by comparing the length of the bars of each category. And under this category, we can find multiple charts and most of them are bar charts. So we can use the row bar chart as a main one, or we can use a bar chart column. As we learned before, if you have a dimension with high cardinality, you can go with the row. But if you have a chart with a low cardinality, then go with the column. So those two charts only cover one dimension. But if you have multiple dimensions, then you can go with the side by side bars or the stacked bar charts or as well the full stacked bar charts then we have different charts under this category like the lollipop charts bubble charts and the scatter plots and you might ask why scatter plot and why bubble chart because the size of the bubble can be used in this analysis so we can see immediately that the technology and the furniture has the highest sales from the size of the bubble the same thing goes for the scatter plots so here again it's really depends on how many questions you want to cover in one visualizations if it's only one use case to go and compare the data then go with the row bar chart or the column bar chart. But if the size comparison is not only the use case that you want to cover, you want to cover multiple stuff, like adding multiple dimensions and measures, then you can go with the other charts under this category. All right, now we have the category bar to whole. It shows how a whole or a value breaks down into its components and how each component gonna contribute to the whole, to the total. And it's gonna show how each component gonna contribute to the whole, to the total. So if you have a question like how does the value contribute to the total, then we are talking about part to whole category. And the best chart to visual the answer is the pie chart. Because visually it's very easy and as well very effective to show how each slice of the pie gonna contribute to the whole pie. And in this category, the part to whole, we have different chart types. Like as we said, the 
main one is the pie chart, but we can go and use the donut chart, especially if you want to show the information of the whole, the total. So you can present it in the middle and around it, you're going to have the slices. Or we can go and use the bar chart, for example, the full stacked bar chart or the area charts, the full stacked area charts. And as well, you can go to the tree map if you want to analyze not only the part to hold, but as well, you want to show the hierarchical data. And as well, we can go to the waterfall in order to show part to hold and as well, the flow of the data. So here again, if you want to only focus on the part to hold use case, go with the pie chart. But if you want to add more information and analyze different use cases, then you can go with the others. All right, now we're going to talk about very important category. We have the correlations. It's going to show the relationship between two or more measures in one visualization. So this category is going to answer questions like, is there any relationship between two measures or how strongly related are two variables or two measures? So if you have such a questions, then we are talking about the category correlation and the best chart in order to visual the correlation is the scatter plot. The scatter plot is very effective in order to show the relationship between two measures and it covers a lot of use cases like discovering the outliers. It's very flexible. We can add a lot of informations to each data point and as well, it's going to help us to build clusters. So if the question to show the relationship between two measures, the best chart is to use the scatter plot. And underneath this category, we can find different type of charts, not only the scatter plot, but scatter plot is the favorite one. So we have the quadrant charts. We can use it as well to analyze two measures and as well to cluster our data or to split it to four sections. Or we can go and use the dual line charts if you want to see as well the changes over time not only the coloration but you can see the trends as well so we can go and use two lines in order to analyze the coloration between two measures or we can go and use one line and one bar chart coloration and as well we can go and compare the sizes of each bar moving on to another chart which is very beautiful in order to go and compare two measures we can use the butterfly or tornado charts and the last one you can use as well the histogram in order to find the coloration between two charts and as well to show the distribution of your data so again if you want only to focus Focus on the correlation, nothing else. You can go and use the scatter plots, but if you want to go and add different use cases like the change over time or the distribution or comparing the sizes, then you can go and use the other ones. Moving on, we have another category called ranking. So we use this category if the most important thing to show is the position of the item in a sorted list. So for example, if you want to show the ranking of customers, the top 10 customers by the sales or the lowest 10 products by the sales, then we can use the ranking category in order to solve those tasks. And the best chart in this category is the bar charts because bar charts are really amazing in order to build a list and as well to go and compare different ranks together. All right, so in order to show the ranking, we have different types of charts. The basic one, as we saw, we have the bar chart, whether it's row or columns. And then we have different charts. If you want to add more information or more use cases in one chart, for example, the lollipop chart, where you can go and put one extra information inside the circles, or you can use the slobby charts. So here, not only we are seeing the ranks between countries, but we can see how they are changing over time. And we have other charts like the funnel chart or the pump charts as well. Here we can show the ranks, how they are changing over the time. And the last one we can use as well the butterfly in order to show the ranking of the categories, for example, here, and as well the correlation between two measures. So here again, as usual, if you want to focus only on ranking, only in this, you can go and use the bar charts. But if you want to go and cover multiple use cases in one visual, then you can go and use the other charts. All right, so now we have the distribution category. We can use it in order to show the values of a data sets and the frequency of their occurrence. So if you have the following question, like what is the distribution of customer's age? Or if the question is, what is the busiest time in the workday? So if you have such a type of questions, then we are talking about the distribution category and the best chart to visual those questions and the answers is to use the histogram. Histograms are amazing way in order to show the patterns using pens and it's make it very easy to understand the distribution of the data. Under the distribution category, we can find different type of charts. The main one can be the histogram and we can go and use different type of plots like the box plots in order to see the distribution of data as well for the dot plot over the time. And as well, we can go and use the scatter plots or the quadrant chart in order to see the distribution of our data and as well to show the correlation between two measures. We can go and use as well the barcode charts. For example, here we can see the distribution of each product in each subcategory and as well 
will the power chart consider to be a distribution chart so here again if you want only to focus on the distribution then go and use the histogram but if you want to cover multiple use cases in one view you can go and use the other charts Moving on, we have the spatial category. Use it when the geospatial pattern of your data is the most important thing that you want to show. So if you have questions or tasks that involves information about the location, like countries, cities, states, like for example, you want to show which city has the highest sales, then we're going to go with this category, the spatial category. And of course here, the charts that you're going to use in this type of visualizations is the map. And in this course, we have built four different maps. The first one, the field map, or we call it Coropleth map. So as you can see, the states are are filled with colors or we can go and use symbols like here we are using the star in order to show the sales for each state and then we have learned how to customize the maps for example here we have created the night vision map All right, so now we're going to talk about the last type of category. We have the flow. We're going to use it in order to visual the movements or the flow of our data. So if you have a question like how the data is moving from one point to another point, then we are talking about the category of a flow. And one very common chart in order to show the flow of the data or the process of the data, we can go and use the waterfall charts. So with this chart, you can see the movement of data or the flow of the process of your data. And as well, we can analyze here the part to whole. All right, so with that, we have covered the eight different categories and we mapped different charts that we have learned in this course to those categories. So as you can see, the process is really simple. In order to understand which chart of visualizations you need in your projects, first you have to understand the questions that should be answered. So once you understood the task or the business question, you can go and map it to one of those eight categories. And after that, you're going to go and choose the best charts within each category in order to answer the question. And with that, you have learned the process of choosing the right visualization, the right chart, for the question and make sure to check the description i left there a link for the visualization cheat sheet and as well you will find the tableau file where i have sorted all those charts under the eight categories all right so with that we have learned how to choose the right chart for your requirements and with that we have completed the tableau chart section and now in the next section in our plan we're gonna learn how to create and design our dashboards in tableau and if you like my content and you want to support the channel then i really appreciate it if you support like and comment this is really gonna help the youtube YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.